Okay, good Sunday morning so far. And uh, today we're going to uh, talk a little bit about immigration, mainly in America, because that's the only country that's really getting hit really hard right now. Well, there could be other ones in Europe. And this is going to be uh, Rockin' Sunday number five. I tried to get away from it last week, totally get away from the rock music because it was, I was really trying listening to some of that music. Church buildings and rockin' to the moon. But the uh, immigration, as you can, I don't know if you can see the images here, but uh, uh, besides the growing frequency of earthquakes, which you already touched on, I think it was last week or the week before, uh, we're experiencing around the world. We're getting fake news. We're getting really fake news. All the news we get on this immigration stuff is fake. They say, oh, these are just poor people looking for a place to, to, to come and, and uh, let them in your country. But why are they all going to America? And they passed six or seven countries coming from uh, South America. Why are they going all to America? South America and Central America. Well, they've gone now. They're on the United States border right now. And they're brought, brought there by these so-called caravans. But these caravans, I'm not going to go into how they're funded and stuff and who's actually funding them today. But... The mainstream media tells us, oh, they're just caravans or migrants or people looking for opportunity. Uh, well, why are they coming in illegally? Why don't, why don't they apply legally? This Jim Acosta, the guy in America, you can see it all over the internet if you look. He told President Trump, you know, it's really no big deal letting the caravans in. President Trump, he's got a little bit of foresight there. But anyhow, these caravans are rushing the border. They're just rushing the border. They're actually breaking down the border walls and trying to get, and a lot of these guys are criminals. And they're, they're doing a lot of havoc in Tijuana. A lot of havoc. There's like 10,000 or something now in Tijuana already. There's more coming. They're storming the U.S. border. There's thousands and thousands of people storming the border. But to the citizens on the Mexican side, this Jim Acoustic guy, guy says it's no big deal. To the citizens on the Mexican side, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. That this caravan was an invasion. As you know, I, Ms. I President, consider it to be an as invasion. As you know, Mr. President, the caravan was not an invasion. It's a, it's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America towards the border with the U.S. It's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America towards the border with the U.S.
Why did you characterize it as such? Because I consider it an invasion. You and I have a difference of opinion. But, Mr. President, if I may, if I may ask Peter, one other question, ahead. are you worried? That's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, That's I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Boy, their city is becoming completely invaded, completely, with these migrants trying to cross the border. The caravanners have become very violent. They're repeatedly attempting to rush the border. They clash with Mexican police and border patrol agents. They bring with them catacrostic diseases, medical conditions. Hundreds of them are vicious con convicted criminals. So contrary to what the fake news media is telling us, that, oh yeah, President Trump's such an evil man, he doesn't want to let these poor people cross the border. This is what these people actually are, you can see it yourself. <clears throat> it's a huge problem, this illegal immigration is a huge... Trump has no problem, and the American government right now has no problem with legal immigration. But do it legally, they said. When we go to country, we get a visa, we do it legally. When I came to Suriname, I got a visa, I did it legally. <clears throat> people we know go to Canada and America, they have visas, they do it legally. These people just want to rush the border. Anyhow, there's now an agreement reached by the United Nations. Now, this United Nations. God said he's going to destroy the United Nations. All the nations that uh, go against God. And that's what the United Nations does. God's going to destroy these people. They say the global... This, this committee they form is the Global Contact Compact for Safe, Orderly, Regular Migration. They're calling migration safe, orderly, and regular. There's nothing orderly about this. You can see it yourself. Anyhow, this thing is being formed, adopted this week in Morocco. This week in Morocco, they're going to make a final decision on this. President Trump always said, already said no, and nine or ten European countries said no way, especially Sweden. They're already invaded. Sweet, Sweden, women, women are getting raped every day, every single day, hundreds of women by these migrants. So now, though this agreement is non-binding on member states, so all the states are members pretty much, it reflects the borderless future that now dominates the thinking of the world's most powerful and elite. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon to see how a borderless, nationless country is. There'd be no rules, no laws, there'd be nobody to follow the laws. It's a perfect setup for the coming Antichrist. Perfect setup. He's doing this. He's doing this. Okay, this is pure insanity. The UN migrants and refugees have a pact in an open border suicide agreement against the West. According to Jim Hoff for the Gateway Pundit, Australia, Switzerland, Poland, and Israel were the latest countries to reject the United Nations Global Compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration. The, the pact will force Western countries to open their borders, provide safe passage and funding for an endless wave of third world migrants. The agreement will bankrupt the West. It is also a globalist's dream. Already, several countries have refused to sign on to this absolutely insane agreement. Several countries will not sign on to the UN insanity, the United States, Poland, Estonia, uh, the Czech Republic, Austria, Hungary, Croatia, Bulgaria, Switzerland, Israel, and Australia. These countries will not sign this agreement, thank God. These are not women and children looking for a better life, okay? These are able-bodied men in their early teens and late teens that are coming here to cause havoc and mayhem and eventually will get on the welfare rolls. We can't afford it and we need to stop. This prime minister in Canada, this Trudeau, he's just messing up everything. I think a dollar would down to almost nothing to start letting these people in. Speaker, the world is seeing unprecedented levels of men, women, and children displaced by war and by persecution. Our government is proud to have taken a leadership role on the Global Compact. This is the first time the international community has worked together to develop a comprehensive set of principles to better manage this phenomenon. It is disappointing to see the Conservatives engage in peddling rebel media conspiracy theories while we work with the international community to protect our robust immigration. System. Luke 21 28. Let's see what God says. Luke 21 28. Because God warned us about these borderless things. God established the borders. God made the borders for a reason. Because of the Tower of Babel that we talked about a couple of Sundays ago. 
and both John Lennon and, 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 and uh, everyone becoming one. God established these borders. And these, this new world elite want to take them all down. Take them all down. 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. Draw nine. Everybody saved? Look up. The borders are coming down. Look up. Know the words in this book. Now, church buildings. Walking to the moon and men becoming women. We're not going to touch so much on the men becoming women today, but uh, you're going to see some of that. Now, we're going to look at Michael Jackson a little bit, because I talked about him in a couple teachings. He was the biggest rock star before he died nine years back. The biggest rock star. The biggest, biggest pop artist. So your grandparents, some of your aunts and uncles, uh, we all saw his debut back in 1964 on television, live. When Michael was just a little boy, he was still, his skin was still uh, dark then. And uh, we're all amazed how talented this, it was absolutely infatuating how talented this little boy was. And he was, absolutely. You know, he became very famous for his moonwalk. I don't know if you guys know anything about Michael. He became very famous for his moonwalk. But uh, where did Michael get the moonwalk? He says he, says, he says he established it, he stole it. Michael stole it, yeah. And uh, you don't have to believe for me, I'll show you the first moonwalker in 1955. 1955. After Michael started doing this moonwalk, they started doing it in all the churches, all the church buildings. What were they doing the moonwalk in the church buildings for? Especially when Michael lied about it. is here we're all moonwalking this is what all these churches were doing hundreds of them There's hundreds of videos you can find online Anyhow, it's all chaos and confusion and god is not the author of confusion this is not a god at all the church has adopted it all Now, there are three ways Michael got his songs. Let's find out how Michael got his songs, because we're to judge all things, right? Let's find out who he got them. Uh, he had a giving tree. He had this tree he would climb, and he was given knowledge up in that tree, and he would get his songs in the giving tree. So let's just look at... So I had this tree that I have at Neverland. I call it my giving tree because I like to write songs up there. I've written many songs up there. I don't know if I can make this any bigger. Anyhow, there's thousands of pictures online of Michael up in this giving tree. Anyway, he's up in this tree where he got this knowledge. What is the giving tree? It's the tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge, the tree of good and evil. Michael Ashton went into the, the tree of good and evil spiritually. He would climb the tree called the given tree, and that's from Genesis 2.17. Let's see, let's see where this is, Genesis 2.17. What is he talking about, the given tree, where he got his knowledge? Genesis 2.
217. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. This was the tree that we're carried the sin forward from Adam and Eve from. And Michael's just promoting this as his, where he gets his knowledge and his music songs. Now, that's one. I said three, right? Two, he would look very deeply into mirrors. He was in contact with spiritual mirrors. You can find all kinds of pictures in the Bible of Michael with his mirrors. Some of these spirits in these mirrors. You go into these mirrors and go into these deep trances. And Michael actually claimed to talk to Liberace in these mirrors. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Liberace. Liberace was the most effeminate faggot, most effeminate sodomite on earth, he, he was one of the first ones that came, came openly that he was gay, called himself gay, he's a sodomite. Liberace was a huge star. His lavish act broke records for popularity on stage and television, and his female fans idolized him with the passion of love-struck teens. He was very quiet, shy, walks almost with a shuffle, and uh, he was gay. Every time I wear this, I think of what Mae West once said, when she said, too much of a good thing is wonderful. But Liberace flirted and beamed at the camera like no one before. The audience was bewitched. And he would talk to Liberace, and Liberace would give Michael permission to use beats from his music. And many of his tunes. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Let's look at Liberace here. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. The most offended. If you ever look at a video of Liberace, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spare you that. But you can look, look up Liberace and look at a video of him. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Don't laugh at these people that are effeminate. Don't be entertained by them. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be ye not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor effeminate. Liberace, look him up. Effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind. How do you abuse yourself with mankind? Doing those unnatural things that the, the uh, sodomites do. And then number three, how Michael got his music? This is the big one. The songs came to him in dreams, in dreams. But Michael could never get to sleep. He had big problems with sleeping. Just like me, I always had big problems with sleeping. You know, he, he would have his doctor give him infused sedation medication to sleep four to three to four days straight to confront his familiar spirits and get uh, 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 permission from them for, for, to get music. And yeah, Chris, Christians today, you go to the charismatic churches, uh, including Lohos where we're at, and uh, a lot of people I know from, from Lohos, they're encouraged to go home and when they fall asleep and wake up in the morning, write down their dreams right away and follow their dreams. Pastors are telling them. This is the same thing Michael did to get his music. Write down your dreams and follow your dreams? Huh. Anyhow, Michael built an image of himself this huge statue, a huge, just like Nebuchadnezzar, is one of the same size as Nebuchadnezzar. But you've got to see this because it's going to show you who Michael was in contact with. Nebuchadnezzar, picture statue. And you have this massive statue. When you, but this is after he got caught. Uh, molesting little boys and he paid millions of dollars to the parents having sex with little would you allow your children to sleep in the bed with a grown man who was not a relative or to sleep in the bedroom sure if I know that person trust him and love them 
That's happened many times with me when I was little. Would you, as a parent, allow your children to sleep in the same bedroom with someone who has the suspicions and allegations that have been made against you and about you today? Would you allow that? Someone... If you knew someone who had the I'm same not, kind of allegations... Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. You, would you let your children... My children? Sleep in that man's bedroom? Mm, if, I, if I knew the person personally, because I know how the press is, I know how people can twist the truth. If I knew the person personally, absolutely yes. Mm. Absolutely. Boys, he slept actually with little boys in his bed, a whole bunch of them. And after he got caught and came back, he made this big statue. This is a big comeback. Like just the same size as Nebuchadnezzar. into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.